Hello from Cookbook Divas. This is Carrie, and today I'd like to take a little detour away from cookbooks to a cocktail book. So if that's not interesting to you, skip to our next video because we'll be doing a whole bunch of cookbook look-throughs this week. But this is Drinking the Devil's Acre, a love letter from San Francisco and her cocktails by Dugan McDonald or Duggan McDonald. Photographs by Luke uh, Abial tiny font, excuse me. And there are uh, cocktail recipes in here, but there's also like a history of San Francisco's cocktail scene back in the day, Barbary Coast, etc. So let me grab a pair of my reading glasses. I've decided that red and hot pink go well together. This came out in 2015. So let me read you what this says. The Devil's Acre was a single bar-filled block within and by bar filled, I mean bar filled, which sounds like heaven to me, bar filled block within San Francisco's infamous Barbary Coast that boasted the wickedest, wildest saloons in America. Ooh. A few short blocks away, marble floored drinking palaces poured the high art of the cocktail. Again, sounds like paradise to me. From this, San Francisco's electrifying nightlife was born, and now, a few generations later, the city's farm-to-glass cocktails have never tasted better. Quench your thirst with these tales and recipes from a city devoted to drink. Dugan or Duggan McDonald, sorry, part culinary anthropologist and part whimsical professor, <laughs> masterfully weaves essays on prominent spirits, insights into San Francisco's historic love affair with Amaro, and recipes for his bartender's secret formulas. There will be 25 iconic cocktail recipes made famous by the city by the bay. From the legendary Pisco Punch and the ingenious Mai Tai to the Gold Rush era Sazerac, which I thought was invented in New Orleans. A lot of people take credit for that one. And the more modern day Lemon Drop. An additional 45 recipes show the evolution of these classic elixirs over time, resulting in such liquor-splashed favorites as the Revolver and the Last Word. Okay. Through the lens of the Devil's Acre, we see that San Francisco is, and always will be, one long, unending romp of bottles popping. A party to which the whole world is invited. That's my kind of party. Okay, let's get started. Let's check out Table of Contents. Oh, we have to start with a historic old photo. A chronology of cocktails, distilled spirits, epistles, and events of the Barbary Coast. Starts off, the very first entry I'll read you. 1579, Sir Francis Drake sails into a cove that's now known as Drake's Bay, just north of the Golden Gate. I didn't know about that. After sacking the port of Pisco, Peru, how rude, and pillaging 300 botijas of prized Pisco. Wow. Drake and his merry men spend six weeks of respite concocting what may be the world's first cocktail. And then we move on into 1917, 1919 to 33, the years of prohibition. I am glad I wasn't alive then. Not much to say during then, nothing was happening. 1933, the Barbary Coast, an informal history of the San Francisco underworld by Herbert Asbury's published. And we're going to end up at 2010 as the last uh, here, Left Coast Libations by Michael Lazar and Ted Munat is published. Pisco, the first spirit imbibed in California, returns with a vigor via the locally owned brand Campo de Encanto, as well as other labels produced in Peru. Okay. The center of sin in San Francisco was the diagonally cut block bounded by Broadway, Kearney, and Montgomery streets, a comparatively small area, but so reeking with depravity that it was known both to the police and to its habitués as the Devil's Acre. Okay. Let's check out the table of contents. I can't show you the whole book, of course, but you can check yours out from the library or we dropped an affiliate link in the description below on YouTube. So they start off with number one, the Martinez, right after the introduction. Then they move on to A Thousand and One Nights, Behind Bars. Then the Barbary Coast Barkeep. And then Hetch Hetchy's Pure Water and the Ice in Every San Francisco Cocktail. The Hands That Taste, such as number 25, The Laughing Buddha. Then we move on to to create every cocktail with love, dot, 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 to hold the past and the future, San Francisco cocktail route, some people would say route, recommended reading. Okay, let's take a look. Another historic photo. This is the saloon of Wheeland and Collins, 
St. Francis Hotel. Ooh, I've been there. March 22, 1933. I have not stayed at the St. Francis, but I've had a cocktail there, and it was amazing. Don't remember what it was because it was 25 years ago. Preface. It is more fun to be sick in California than to be well anywhere else. <laughs> okay. That's a quote from someone I've never heard of. Okay, lots of stuff about cocktails. La la la. Let's get to the photo and the info. Introduction. Okay. Drinking was such a fact of city life that it was certainly considered no disgrace to frequent a saloon, which the entire male populace did without embarrassment. Since everybody acknowledged that everybody drank, large-scale social drinking became taken for granted, and there was consequently little stigma attached. San Francisco has never lost its enthusiasm for alcohol. That's Doris Muscatine, or Dory, Doris Muscatine, old San Francisco, which I assume is a magazine or a book. Okay. Nightclubs on Pacific Street in the Barbary Coast District, 1909. We're learning more history. Number one, the Martinez. Okay. So every recipe starts off with the number, the name, and then who created it or takes credit for it. This one's created by Jerry Thomas, championed in its later form by Winston Churchill, of all people, and swilled by millions. And I won't read the full recipe, but the ingredients are number 209 gin, specifically, a Vaya sweet Italian vermouth, never heard of it, maraschino liqueur, orange bitters, and a lemon peel, and then how to make it, little instructions. And then they move on to talk about the Martinez and where and why it was developed, Winston Churchill facts, etc. A martini came to symbolize luxury and escape. Yes. And later it of evolved into anything served in a stemmed glass. And they're talking about James Bond, la la la. Then, I'm not sure what's going on, it evolved into the Marguerite, which is gin, dry vermouth, absinthe, orange bitters, the Laurel Palmer by Charlie Russo, gin, Lille Blanc, Benedictine, so little variations on it, and some info on gin. Gin is not my favorite liquor. The bartender's secret formula, which I won't read to you because then it wouldn't be a secret. Just kidding. A superior cocktail old Tom Gin. Info on vermouth. I am going to read that because that will be interesting. A superior cocktail vermouth. And then we move on to the Mai Tai. And everything follows. Make your own orgat syrup. Wow, really? With almonds and water and cane sugar and rum and flour water? I guess you could do it. Some little variations, including a fog cutter, a dead reckoning, Wilson smash, proper cocktail syrup. This is very educational. Distilled sugar cane. Wow. Number three, Pisco punch. Quaffed mightily by Mark Twain and Tom Sawyer, perfected by Duncan Nicholl in the gay 90s. So let's jump ahead. Here's info on Pisco, which we need to read. Pineapples, East India cocktails, single village fix. Number four is the highball. I can't show you all the photos, so pretty soon I'm going to skip ahead. Negroni. I'm trying to like them. The flavors kind of... Oh, but I think I, I want to like them. Not to be cool, but because everyone that I know that enjoys them really enjoys them. But I'm not there yet. And I like Campari, but I, part of it is gin is not my favorite cocktail. Okay, here's some jasmine involving gin, Cointreau, Campari, lemon juice. The Intercontinental, by the author of our book, is cognac, averna, maraschino liqueur, and an orange peel for garnish. Irish coffee, mm -hmm. I bet you guys love that. So drop me a note in the comments below, what is your favorite cocktail? Or what's your favorite liquor and have you ever invented a cocktail and did it work or was it bad? I'd love to hear that. So Scorpion Bowl is something I had never heard of until I started hanging out with my San Francisco friends. And even if we happen to all be in Boston for some computer thing, they would order Scorpion Bowls in Boston too. It's really fun. It's created by trader Vic Bergeron for willing fools everywhere. <laughs> I bet we're going to learn a lot. The writer's talking about sitting in the Tonga room on sharing drinks or how to use a long straw. In the days of COVID, that's probably not going to happen. Here is my favorite cocktail, the Manhattan. Beautiful uh, cocktail photography, by the way. Aromatic bitters, just a dash. Okay, the other night I was bored and I put like a whole bunch of dashes of bitter into my Manhattan. 
I did finish the drink. I really regretted doing that. It was not good. Okay, on whiskey. Now, I am a bourbon girl, and one of my closest friends is a rye fan, so when we go out, she has her drink made one way, I have it the other. Rye is just too spicy for my tongue. The Bloody Mary. I am going to be very curious to read this. Created by Fernand Pete Petiot, Petiot in Paris and consumed by the hungover and the hopeful every day. Yeah. It's true, I only drink it in the morning. Make your own beef tea. No thank you, I'm vegetarian. The sidecar. Lemon juice. California brandy, to be specific. Orange curacao and cocktail syrup. Hmm. I love them old fashioned, but I didn't know they were made with brandy. I guess I wasn't paying attention. On brandy, superior cocktail brandy, bartender secret, a mojito, which I've hardly ever order because every bartender that I know in real life is like, those are so annoying to make. Please don't, please don't order it. Okay. The ancestry of the world's first drink. The mojito is believed to be the world's oldest cocktail, but its paternity, despite what is commonly believed, isn't exactly Cuban. So we could read the history of that and I'll do that. Here's a drink called the missionary's downfall <laughs> involving pineapple juice. The farmer's market in the cocktail glass. Yes. Fresh produce, fresh ingredients. Now we're in the chapter A Thousand and One Nights Behind Bars. Not sure what's going on. History, history, the author's writing to us, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Now we're number 12, the Margarita. Uh, not sure what the behind bars means, but I'll go back and read it. The Sazerac supposedly created by, okay, Antoine Peychaud and perfected in San, Fran San Francisco's Peerless Saloon. Hmm, Antoine, hmm, that's not what New Orleans would tell me. The French 75, this is how I started liking gin. Gin and tonic was eh. I started drinking French 75s and now I sort of like gin. Hmm. Meyer lemon marmalade, ooh, sparkling wine in the cocktail, yes something called the smash. Now, if I just looked at that, I would have thought it was a mojito and I would have been wrong. It has basil leaves also. Perfected by Harry Johnson and our author as an homage to the world's first drink. Nice. A bar keeps whimsy, blackberry and cabernet cabarini. Mmm. Pisco sour. Now that involves, let's see, what is an egg white? So not everyone People with compromised immune systems don't want to be eating raw egg whites, but I'll take the chance. The daiquiri. Now that is what a daiquiri is supposed to look like. Why, when I ordered it back when I didn't know what I was doing, this big old frozen messy drink comes out. This is what it, oh, that looks so good. The perfect summer drink. Okay. Latin cocktails are best in the winter. Hmm. I won't argue. Lemon drop. Mm-hmm. Blackberry and basil. Cooler. That sounds good for summer. The dark and stormy. I have wondered about the origins of that. And all it is, is a lime ginger beer and specifically Gosling's Black Seal Rum, which I've never heard of. I wonder if there's any substitutions that you could use instead. Nope. Okay. Superior Cocktail Black Strap Rum. Ginger beer in San Francisco, a little brief history. Recipe for Moscow Mule, Kentucky Buck, El Diablo. The Barbier Coast Barkeep info info the ginger rogers never heard of that one the blood and sand i don't want to show you too many pictures so we're about to get to the end yeah we're getting to the end on using a liqueur as a principal spirit that's difficult because liqueurs can be hangover heaven the basil gimlet i have to show you that quickly because that's a beautiful photo the hands that taste if you put a sprig of rosemary under your nose you'll quickly recognize this general odor and you will note that it's rosemary but you can also take a few moments to dissect the various compounds of its general fragrance and discover that rosemary contains wood, floral, and spice tones, as well as notes of camphor and eucalyptus. That's the difference between smelling and experiencing between drinking and savoring. Well, I don't have a good sense of smell. I don't know if I can do that. Okay. Telegraph Hill, Historic View, 1890. Wow. I am going to learn so much from this. Besides history, cocktail, oh my gosh, this is going to be incredible. I'm so glad I checked this out from the library. If you'd like to see more of our cookbook reviews and look-throughs and cocktail books, check out cookbookdivas.com, our blog. We have a podcast. 
also called Cookbook Divas. We post cookbook news and info to Instagram and Facebook, and of course our cookbook look-throughs to YouTube. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, click like, and drop us a nice comment because that will show the social media gods to show you more of our posts if you enjoy them. (laughs) Bye.